Good morning, fans of the new network. It is James Ernest of Sarah's Playlist. We are having the pleasure of having Dave Henriquez, in other words, Dave Henrock. We are excited about having him on. He is one of the main people from Hand of Tribe. Dave, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. So how did it all get all started? How did you learn how to play guitar? Oh, how did I learn to play guitar? Well, um, you know, it started off as like I was I was always an artist, you know. Mm -hmm. Growing up, I was always drawing and stuff. And uh, you know, I think my, you know, the the drawing with my right hand, the precision, you know, kind of went over to my guitar pick. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So always always into that. And uh, I don't know, I just kind of picked it up, you know. Uh my actually my I got a funny story. My my brother actually, uh, we were big into Van Halen, you know growing up Eddie Van Halen and, and my brother had told me big influence my brother with me uh musically and um and you know he was like hey I heard you know Eddie Van Halen played a Spanish style you know classical style guitar with wide frets and thick strings you know he's like I heard he played that for a whole year with just his fingers and no pick mm -hmm. so that's what I did I went out and bought a Spanish style guitar a classical Spanish style guitar and I played that thing with no pick just my fingers for a whole year and when I picked up the the electric, it was like, it was like I was just flying on it, you know. Exactly, yeah. it made it so much easier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, yeah, you know, that's kind of how it all started, I guess. So, do you say he was one of your bigger influences, or who were some of the other ones that would qualify as a, a big influence in your life? Yeah, he kind of, you know, he he was he's four years older than me, so he was always kind of, you know, playing all this this music, you know, and it was got me into the classics, you know, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, uh, Aerosmith, you know, Ozzy, Randy Rhodes, Jimi Hendrix, you know, uh, all, all the greats, you know, Led Zeppelin. Uh, th those are those are my, you know, Pink Floyd. Those are all my my main influences, you know. Great influences. I mean, gosh. I mean, if yeah. you're going to copy or work on, you know, uh, be inspired by somebody, those are some of the greats to do it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 How did your time in Hourcast prepare you to be part of a band like Hand of Tribe or Hand of the Tribe? Well, it taught me pretty much everything, you know. Um, I'd always played in bands, you know, but then when I got into, uh, when I when I started Hourcast, um you know, it taught me, I found myself in a situation where I was like, you know, I was learning how to play the drums, play the bass, was learning how to write songs, you know, it kind of sharpened my my skills with that whole thing, you know, producing and, and writing and arranging. So so it really taught me uh, that and, you know, and it showed me a lot of the the business side and, and, you know, we were fortunate enough to get on a bunch of tours you know, um, and uh, that, you know, just opened my eyes to a whole new world that, you know, I wasn't even aware of that, you know, really kind of changed everything, you know, my perspective of uh, music and what it can do, you know, on a, on a bigger scale. So, yeah, it, it taught me, uh, it taught me everything pretty much. One of the things I think about the music industry is quite interesting is when things changed over to the music video. And with, of course, Hourglass, you all had some really amazing videos. What was yeah. it like working with Jesse Jane? <laughs> well, uh, you know, at that point, um, you know, I, I wrote the song and I had a whole kind of different vision for like the video and what it was going to, you know, you know, what that was going to be about. But um, I, I actually really didn't have much to do with that other than the music, you know, because uh, the singer was the only one in the video. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know, at that point, it kind of felt like things were kind of going in different directions, you know. Um, so so that kind of I mean, that was amazing. Right. Um, yeah. But, uh, that is I, it. You know, unfortunately, uh, you know, recently I heard she she passed away. Correct. So that's, that's yeah. Pretty that's that's a sad thing so you know r.i.p that's that's pretty sad but um you know it's pretty amazing but with that you had some other amazing music videos as well you had freak show tell us about that cool twist at the end and what was it like working on that video that was like you know my first real kind of big production video you know um you know, we we went. We were. It was in, done in California, and you know, we went out to this almost like the circus graveyard type thing. They had all these, you know, all the circus memorabilia, and and uh, it was pretty cool. You know, we uh, we we set up shop and we just filmed in a in a day, and 
you know, that was like, you know, like I said, it was like a first kind of big production. So it was, it was pretty amazing. And the twist at the end, you know, it was like, you know, the director was like, all right, you know, just, just come in and pretend like, you know, you're peeling your face off and, yeah. you know, so, you know, we just kind of a little bit of acting and, 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 uh, yeah, it was pretty interesting, but, uh, the, the final result came out pretty, pretty cool. And, you know, that was, that was a fun video for sure. Oh, definitely. I mean, the special effects on that at the end, yeah. I mean, folks, <laughs> yeah, it felt like, uh, I was watching like a men in black movie. <laughs> yeah 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 that was that was fun heck yeah so do you have stories that beckon to be told oh man i mean yeah i do i do there's a few that really stand out you know one you know having been able to tour you know with some amazing bands you know that all the all those stories you hear about you know of, of bands and rock and roll that, that's like it's all true and then oh, so cool you know? yeah um that was that was pretty eye-opening but um you know the uh the whole thing uh i i, I have story like okay so one story that sticks out a lot was uh, you know we were um we were on tour with 30 seconds to mars um uh, when the kill came out and um you know we were playing mile high stadium um oh, wow and, yeah and and uh we you know we only did like it was like a, i think we did a few days on on you know we jumped on a few shows uh for the warp tour and uh, uh we had played and then 30 seconds to mars came on and you know we won't watch them side stage and absolutely amazing show you know amazing mm -hmm. performance and there was a lot of people in the crowd and <clears throat> i'll never forget this um you know we were, we were we were watching the band and um you know jared leto at the end of the show at the end of the set he's like all right you know, he's standing, they had, they had these two big, you know, 30 seconds to Mars flags on, on the front mm -hmm. of the stage, you know, and, uh, the, you know, Le Leto was literally like, all right, guys, you know, thank you so much. He's like, all right, I want you all to come and follow me to, to our merch booth. And so the band proceeded to grab the flags and they jumped off stage and it was literally like the parting of the sea, you know, Le Leto and the band got, you know, oh. they, they came off stage and the whole crowd just parted and the band walked through the, the, the crowd with their mm -hmm. flag. And then like, the entire crowd, like thousands of people started following them towards the merch booth. And we were just like, what the hell? Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was amazing. You know, I was like, Oh my God. Like yeah. it was literally like the parting of the sea yeah. them walking with their, you know, with their flags. And, and that just like, we were like, Oh my God, that's amazing. You know, that is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you know, we went out with seven dust, you know, there, there was this one thing that uh, Morgan Rose used to, or does still, I guess is uh, uh, amazing guys is amazing bands. Um, um, you know, he'd be playing, he'd be playing a song and um in the middle of the song, as he's playing, he would toss a drumstick out to the crowd and a fan would catch it. And then he would go and pick up another stick. And then he would do this back and forth drumstick toss in the middle of the song Whoa. The in the crowd. So he'd pick somebody out and he'd toss a stick and then they would toss it back to him in the middle of the song. He's tossing sticks back to the fans. Oh, and then he'd pick somebody else in the crowd and he'd be playing and then he'd toss another stick and then they would get this stick thing going and then he would keep and we were just like, Wow. wow like yeah. what is going on you know um yeah tons of stories like that you know what i mean but like, yeah those those kind of stick out the most you know that is awesome yeah I, was say, yeah I can imagine you don't have the time for it now but you definitely are gonna have to write a book someday <laughs> i mean i got tons of stories man you know so much has happened you know and, and uh, i'm just grateful for it all you know so cool yeah well how did it all start how did you meet roger and paulo yeah, so I mean, it all started, you know, I was on, I was in our cast, and then that that dissolved, um, and I just, you know, I I just kept doing what I always did. I just kept writing songs and producing music, um, and uh, you know, I just found myself like, okay, yeah, I guess uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try singing now because I've always sang, but always did backups, but I always produced vocals. I always had like a bunch of cool melodies and ideas. So uh, I was just like, screw it, you know, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try and sing and play, you know, which is a difficult thing, you know, it's, that's not something that comes very natural to me. But um, I said, I'd give it a shot. Um, and uh, I just started writing a bunch of music. Um, and, and, uh, and pa Roger, I, I had known since high school. Um, you know, we, we, we grew up in the same, same town. <clears throat> and, um, 
you know, we, we've been friends since high school um, and we, we've been in multiple bands throughout the years, you know, uh, a lot of great bands, uh, a lot of good times. And, uh, you know, we, you know, Rogers is, the, he's just a great bass player. He's one of those guys you're like, you know, you can, you know, he's going to sound good and play good. And, and he's always just been a solid, you know, uh, bass player. So I've always been really comfortable playing with him, you know. Um, so we've had a long withstanding relationship. Um, and Paulo, uh, Paulo, you know, he's, he, uh, I, I, you know, just, can't, I've just met him, you know, uh, last year. Um, we actually, I met him on a, on a, on an app for musicians. Huh. Yeah. And, uh, I was just kind of scrolling through and, and I just saw him and, you know, he had a cool, he had a cool vibe and I was watching some of his videos and he was playing some really cool songs. I'm like this, and he was close by, you know? So, um, yeah, we just kind of hit it off and, and, you know, and, and, and here we are, you know, so. So is it kind of like the Facebook free musicians or what type of app would you kind of compare it to? Cause it sounds like it's a place to meet and see other musicians. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the name of it actually kind of escapes me right now. Uh, it's a band. It was called band mix. Oh yeah. Band mix. Um, and, uh, um you know there's a lot of that's a that's a great tool you know if anybody's looking for musicians um you know that that really uh that that you know i was talking to a few guys and like i said paul was you know he was he was the coolest he was you know, the best player he seemed the more the more professional um so we went with him but yeah check out band mix you know awesome i will so roger you've known you know the majority of your life paulo you just met but yet somehow it feels kind of like you all are kindred spirits. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I'd like to think so. Yeah, we're pretty easy going. We're chill. You know, we, we're on a mission. You know, we, we just want to keep playing and get out there and and, uh, and play as many shows and connect with as many people uh, through our music as we can, you know? Awesome. So what's the story behind the name, the hand or hand of the tribe? Yeah, hand of the tribe. Um, So I kind of wanted to, uh, it's like, you know, it's like uh, I'm paying homage to my uh, uh, Southern American indigenous, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, ethnicity. You know, uh, my 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 folks are from Ecuador, oh. um, and so um, yeah, uh, you know, I just wanted to kind of pay homage to that. You know, so I was thinking tribal, oh, boom, hand of the tribe. You know, so yeah, that's that's just like paying homage to our to my uh, indigenous uh, uh, background. Awesome. Now, are you a professional wrestling fan at all? Professional, uh, not really. When I was a kid, yeah, but not. not I know uh, what you mean. A lot of people, most people, grow out of that phase. <laughs> yeah, However, yeah. I'm still a big kid, so yeah. I'm still a big oh, nice. fan. <laughs> the, the name of your band would be a perfect name of a song for Roman Reigns. Okay, Usos or somebody like that. I think that the combination because. Uh, we just had the Union Underground, and they did a big thing with uh, WWE back in the day. They wrote the theme song to Raw. Oh, awesome! Across the nation, and yeah. I when heard the name of your band. I'm like, he needs to watch a couple of Jey Uso, a couple of yeah. Roman Reigns matches, and be inspired. Yeah, to that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when they play their song on their network, gosh, millions of people hear it. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to be a part of that. That sounds like fun. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, let's see. It is great how you all are able to bring straight up hard rock and metal to the masses. How do you do that? You know, just just kind of do what I've always done. You know, it's just to write songs. You know, write songs from the soul. You know, I'm I'm a self taught player, so I just kind of close my eyes and go with it you know whether it be on the drums the bass the guitar you know just kind of put it all together and and you know something uh something cool always always pops out so um you know that's this just you know just kind of just uh just be pure with yourself and just kind of let the music uh, write itself you know awesome. so was was that the process for your most recent album tear me apart well, that that's one of our that was one of our singles. Tear me apart. The album is uh, it's a self titled, so it's a self titled debut. So the album's called Hand of the Tribe. Yeah, um, and yeah, like I said, you know, I I, I you know being an hour cast kind of showed me how to you know play drums, bass, guitar, and just kind of arrange and write music. So I just kind of did that, you know, and I would 
I just, you know, I got a little little drum, a little rolling uh, V drum, and you know, I just uh, gotta get into my little groove and write makes write some riffs and just kind of put it all together and you know show the band say hey and then boom they they kind of take it to another level you know um so yeah i just that's that's kind of the process how it's how it's been usually you know like you mentioned before my bias for great music videos and i really think your moonwalks is phenomenal using stop uh, motion animation yeah Tell us about, uh, you know, your process of working with them and then who made that? Because that was just so phenomenal. Yeah, that was uh, Vincent Marcon from My Pet Skeleton. Amazing director. Um, this guy, he just has amazing vision, amazing touch, and he's an amazing artist. And, uh, you know, we wanted to put together something a little different, you know, um, and uh, he had some great ideas. Um, and then, you know, he, he, you know, the song is kind of, it's, it's a great vibe, you know, everyone seems to like that tune. Um, but Vincent was amazing. You know, he put that whole team together and did the whole thing. And, you know, um, you know, we wanted it, we wanted to kind of bring like, you know, the whole electronic waste thing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to, 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 to light in a way. So, um, yeah, but Vincent was really like the main, you know, director for that. So. Um, he's he's amazing. Check him out. Vincent Marcon, My Pet Skeleton. Amazing team. Earlier, you mentioned your experience with Rock on the Range and Warp Tour. What is your favorite event that you've done? I mean, the, the Rock on the Range was amazing. That's like a huge party, right? Um, I don't know. I've always I've always liked playing, you know, this like the House of Blues, you know, all over the country is is pretty awesome, you know, because you kind of, I don't know, there's this a familiar to it you know when you when you pull up and play um but i mean honestly um another th another thing i learned too was like you know i remember again you know the, the 30 seconds to mars thing was like we're playing in front of thousands and then the next night we're in a small club playing in front of like you know, seven eight hundred people but what i learned is you know you give it your all every single night you know whether it be five five hundred or five thousand or fifteen thousand whatever it is you just give it all and leave it all on the stage you know you mentioned about your writing process earlier. Is part of your process staying grounded in truth? Is that in is that intention? Absolutely. Yeah. All these songs are, you know, life experiences and things that happen. And uh yeah, you just, you know, always want to stay true to yourself. And uh uh, you know, and just again, just like I said, uh, you know, you know, play from your heart, play from your soul. And and uh and usually that's that's the best, at least for us, that's been the best, the best way to go, you know. Definitely. So you mentioned uh, how Hand of Tribe, the name, is inspired by the South, um, you know, your background. Um, but what about nature? How big of a role does nature play in your inspiration? It plays a huge role, you know. Um, Hand of the Tribe is very tribal. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, I'm inspired by nature all the time. I like actually, you know, when I'm writing, I like to go for walks, go for hikes in the woods, just kind of get, you know, get a little lost and breathe some fresh air and kind of reconnect. Then you come back to the studio, you know, if you're refreshed and, uh, you know, again, you just keep writing and writing from the soul, you know, play from the soul, play with feeling. And then, you know, like I said, usually, usually some great, great art comes out, you know? Oh, awesome. Yeah. I like how you use your raw emotions to tell powerful stories. Um, is that intentional? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> you know, when you're writing a heavy song, you know, and there's a lot of screaming and stuff, you know, it's like the lyrics kind of bring that emotion out in you, out, out of you, you know. Um, or if we're playing live, you know, we're getting into it, the crowd's getting into it, we're getting into it. But uh, yeah, it's, you know, raw emotion is what it's all about, really. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm self-taught. So it's really all about how I'm feeling. You know, um, I might be writing a mellow song. I might be kind of, you know, feeling a little a certain way. And, you know, but usually if, I, you know, if I'm writing a heavy song, you know, that that the music kind of brings it out of you, you know, that that raw emotion. So, yeah, it's a, it's a big part of it. Yeah, it has yeah. been a pleasure today on Sarah's Playlist on the new network, having Dave Henrock, Hand of the Tribe. Before yeah. we let you go, Dave, where on social media, where on the web, where can our listeners find out about you and the Hand of the Tribe? Yeah, on all, all, all platforms, you know, on Instagram, at, at, at Hand of the Tribe, Facebook, 
um you know you can listen to us on on spotify and apple music um, we're all over youtube we got a bunch of videos on youtube uh and if i may too i'd like to mention that um you know we're about to release uh an, our next single um february 23rd oh cool um, through our label hitscope music group and danny barros is uh, the main man and thank you danny um and uh yeah we, we got we got we, we just shot um a, a 15 minute short story with um red 13 media and the amazing director jim foster um uh those guys have a great team mark roberg johnny roberg uh, uh edgar um all those guys uh jim foster they're, they're amazing and uh you know i uh, we went into the studio last year with uh, this producer, Eric Ron, amazing producer. Holy crap. Absolutely amazing. And uh, we, we recorded uh, four songs. We did uh, like a four song EP and um, we, we, we kind of put all the songs together and uh, I, I'm just, we're so excited for you guys to see this, these videos. Um, it's, it's like, it's like a, it's like a little mini movie, you know, um, it's so cool i just i cannot wait for everybody to, to check them out the first single comes out uh february 23rd uh it's called here again um and the next thing will be called only you the one after that is called singularity and the last one is called smile and i tell you man these videos the songs came out absolutely amazing and i can't wait for everyone to check them out so yeah so check out red 13 media bad bitches productions uh jim foster and uh yeah Thank you to Eric Ron, Danny Barros, and everyone that's been involved with this. You know, I really appreciate it. Well, originally I was going to let you go, but now I'm intrigued. I was going to yeah. say, does the narrative, does it run throughout the thing or does yes, it? Yes, it does. Yes. Oh, yes. Cool. It's so cool. So it starts off, you know, uh, I don't want to say too much, but it's there, there's a whole storyline behind it. And, you know, the song Singularity, um, I don't know if you know what that is, but it's like, you know, the hypothetical point in time when, 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 when machines take over Ooh. yeah and uh that that song that song is deep and the song all the songs are great but it's got like this that that whole kind of thing that whole theme behind it so you know you guys are gonna have to check it out but uh it's it's really cool um and uh it's a great story and the videos look amazing and and it sounds amazing and the acting was great and you know i, I literally sit here and watch them all together and it's like I feel like I'm watching a, a little, a, you know, a short, a, a movie, you know, and it's, uh, it's so cool. So we're super excited for everyone to check this out. Yeah. That is so cool. I'm going to mark that on the calendar, February yeah. 23rd. I want to check that out. Yeah. Well, Dave, thank you for joining us today. Yes. Thank you, man. Thank you. I want to thank Scott too. Scott Harrington. He's amazing. I love that dude. And like I said, thank you to everyone involved and thank you for having me, man. Appreciate it. Okay.